the game and and I'm sure you know someone who pays attention to the other series going on in the postseason. What has your reaction been to some of these fan incidents? Last night we had one, then obviously with Kyrie and Russ a couple days ago. Um, what's you know what's been your reaction to those incidents that have kind of marred some of these games? Yeah, uh, people are acting the fool, man. That's my reaction, and it's it's almost like it's like a copycat thing now. Uh, who can one up the other person? Um, I think John Morant's family uh, received uh, racist language towards them in Utah. Um, Kyrie Irving had a water bottle thrown at him. Trey Young got spit on. Somebody ran the, on the court in Philly. Thank goodness. And our two home games uh, here and two in Portland, uh, we have had nothing like that. And I hope that remains the case. Um, I think some people are coming out of a COVID pandemic and maybe they just are trying to express themselves, but that's not the way to do it. Um, let, let the players play the game, enjoy the game, uh, and keep your ass in the seat, keep your water bottles in your lap, and, uh, and please don't spit or use any racist language to any player. You know, not, not just our players, but any player. Uh, you know, that, that tarnishes the game. And the playoffs are the best time of the year for NBA basketball. So let's get back to spotlighting the great players uh, that we have uh, across the league. Next, we'll go to Vinny Benedetto. Hey, Michael, for, for most of this series, it seems like you've played a, a larger rotation than Portland has playing nine or 10 guys where Portland's going eight or nine most of the time at, with this going at least six. Now, is that something you feel like you can use to your advantage as the series gets deeper? Or is it not much of a, not much of a difference maker for you? Yeah, no, it's funny. Uh, one of the coaches brought it up the other day, how I think twice now in the, in this series, we've had two days in between games and, and that definitely, you know, a small benefit to them because they are only playing eight players or eight and a half players, however you want to look at it. Uh, where we are playing a, a few more, but um, you know, those guys are used to that. I mean, Damon Lillard and CJ McCollum, especially, are used to playing heavy, heavy minutes. So um, we know it's going to go six, it may go seven. Um, so hopefully by the end of the series, late in games, uh, us using our bench, trusting our bench a little bit more, uh, maybe can help us. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Next, we'll go to Chris Marlowe. Hey, Coach. Uh, we all know that Aaron Gordon is a very versatile defensive player. I is it difficult for you to figure out uh, at some point in the game who he should be guarding on Portland since he can guard guards and forwards and little guys and big guys? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's, it's difficult. Uh, I think we just um, – we try to change up as often as possible. Uh, not just coverages, but more importantly, matchups. Who's starting on Dame? Who's starting on CJ? Who's starting on Norm? Uh, and then switch it up out of timeouts, out of halftime, just to give them different looks, you know. Um, but I, I think it's just kind of a, each game uh, will be a feel, Chris. You know, how's the game going? Who's got the hot hand? When do we want to employ that tactic? Um, and just continue to kind of rotate guys. And I think each guy has had really good minutes on their backcourt, um, but I think it's tough to ask any one player to do that over a the course of a 48-minute game. Uh, those guys are such talented players, and they have the ball in their hands uh, all night long. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to try to give them different looks. Last game, once again, I mean, their starting backcourt goes 10 for 29 uh, and 3 of 12 from 3. So I thought we did a great job on those two, but obviously Norman Powell was terrific. Yusuf Nurkic was terrific. Um, so as much as we give attention to Dame and CJ, they have other players that are capable of beating you, and we just saw that. Next, we'll go to Ryan Blackburn. Coach, so far the team that has won the first quarter in each of the first four games has won the series. So is that uh, – a, a correlation equals causation thing? Is that just, hey, you're, you're trying to uh, win each of those quarters and, and that's just a that's just the one that's being uh, emphasized? Uh, how, do, how do you evaluate the first quarter and what do you expect to take into game five tonight? Well, we need to be a hell of a lot better than we were uh, in first quarters in Portland. 
Uh, I thought game three, the beginning of our first quarter, we got down by nine points early uh, and then used a terrific 19 to four run uh, to take the lead in that game. Uh, game number four, it's a one point game about halfway through. And then they go on a nine, 10 to one run, I believe, to kind of push that lead out to uh, double figures. Um, but yeah, you know, you always want to get off to a great start, you know, um, uh, and I think it will be telling early in this game to see uh, where is our urgency, where is our intensity, where is our aggressiveness, where is our attack mentality, where is our physicality. Um, you know, that, that should be on full display from the jump ball. Um, and, and we have to try to sustain that for as close to 48 minutes uh, as possible. But, um, you know, I, I've looked at some of the numbers, you know, the two wins, the two losses, and some of the numbers that jump out and our two wins were shooting 48.5% from three uh, and our two losses were shooting 30. That is a drastic difference. Uh, sometimes it comes down to making and missing shots. Um, when we play with an attack mindset, uh, we get to the foul line, you know, 28 times and our wins only, I think around 15 and our losses, uh, our hand activity, our deflections, our contests, our loose balls. Those are all examples of us uh, being active or not active enough. So uh, hopefully those numbers all um, after the game will be in our favor. And that'll be another indicator in terms of why and how we win games against Portland in round one. All right, we have time for one more question. We'll end with Mike Singer. Hey, Michael. Uh, Nurk seemed like one of the swing players in game four. How did Portland use him differently after reviewing the film? And what do you anticipate them doing? Uh, do you anticipate them doing something similar with him moving forward? No, they didn't do anything different. You know, we just did a shitty job. <laughs> you know, I mean, game one we lost and game four we lost in both those games. I think we gave up on average 10 points in each of those games to Nurk rolling. You know, we know it's going to be a high volume pick and roll, high volume dribble handoff game. Um, and they find him in the pocket. And when we win games, we're there early. We're physical. When we lose games, one and four, we're late, we're soft, and he has his way with us. So uh, I wouldn't say they did anything different. Uh, and, and to me, you know, Nurk was really good, but I thought Norman Powell was, you want to talk about a swing player, I think uh, the swing MVP would be Norman Powell. He was phenomenal. 29 points, got out and ran in transition, attacked, made threes. First play of the game, very first play of the game, he drives around a screen and gets to the basket for a layup unimpeded. So uh, that was the start of his night, and uh, it went downhill for us from there. So, uh, yeah, we got to be early with our low man, meet the roller early, and uh, we have to do a much better job of getting back and setting our defense than we did last game. All right, that'll do it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.